While game developing in Grudot, it's normal to make some mistakes. Fortunately, some of them can easily be addressed with this video as not only will I mention them but also guide you through the process of fixing the ones you may be making. Let's dive right in. The first one is using deprecated notes. Deprecated notes are the ones that are prob probably going to be deleted in a future update and that are also not going to be anymore receiving any kinds of new feature and therefore its usage should be minimized. Some deprecated notes in Grout 4.3 are the following. We have the tile map node that is marked as deprecated. And then we also have the thing with Parallax 2D that is a new node that has been recently introduced and this is marked as experimental but this is uh, meant to uh, replace completely Parallax background and Parallax layer. So probably these two will then be marked soon as deprecated, okay? So this means that, for example, when you want to create any kind of tile map, instead of using this node tile map, you should be using the tile map node, tile map layer node, sorry. And in reality, usually in this kind of deprecated nodes, there is a super easy way to use the corresponding option. Let me show you. For example, over here I have this tile map with uh, three different layers, red, blue and green, okay, with the corresponding uh, tiles. So instead of having to do everything from scratch in order to convert this tile map into a tile map layer node that should be the corresponding and the best option, uh, I can just click over here and press extract tile map layers as individual tile map layer nodes. And this will basically convert the different tile map layers into different tile map layer nodes. Uh, so I will have everything as it should. And finally, for example, this tile map node, you can replace it to be a node, okay? Or even you could make it a node 2D, okay? As if it were just a, a wrapper. So now you will have it correctly uh, separated in each layer. Mistake number two is not making resources unique. So for example, let's say that you have here your player object and probably some issue that you have encountered is the fact that if you create a copy of this player and for example I will move it a little bit to the right and if over here you would try to actually resize this collision shape what is going to be happening is that both collision shapes are going to be resized at the exact same time and in most cases this is a behavior that you want to avoid because what happens if I actually want this node to be an enemy and maybe the enemy has other shape than this uh, rectangle. So there of course we are going to be encountering this error. So I will select any of these collision shapes, I will right click on the uh, shape asset or resource actually and over here I will just press make unique. And now as you can see I can resize this collision shape, make it as big as I want and the changes are not going to also be taking effect in this other collision shape. And another way of fixing this would be to press on this icon over here and press make sub resources unique, okay? Oh, well actually this will uh, take in count all the resources and uh, not only the, the collision shape but also maybe other resources that the node may have. So I will click over there and now as you can see I'm getting the exact same result. This can't only happen uh, in collision shapes, it can also happen in other kinds of resources. So always keep an eye on this. 3. Not using control container nodes. This may seem quite obvious for somebody that actually has some hands-on experience in the Grout engine, but it is always worth mentioning again. Whenever you are using any kinds of control nodes, the ones that you usually use to create UIs or uh, user interfaces, you should avoid position these uh, nodes uh, manually, okay? You shouldn't, for example, here have this score label at the, um, at the top left and then this lives label, I have just positioned it manually, okay? Because this was over here and I've just moved it over here. Of course, this is going to work just fine, but what happens if, for example, um, I want to have a third label, okay, I will just make here a third label. And well, what is going to happen is that we will actually have no easy way of making sure that the separation between these labels 
is always the same one and always you guys have to be um proportional we can't have a different separation between these two than in these two so if you do not use containers your uis are not going to be quite expandable and the solution is quite simple instead of doing this like this what you should do is to add some kinds of container node and actually have lots of containers as you can see but the ones that are usually most used at least for these simple usages are hbox container and bbox container basically horizontal and vertical containers so for this case i will use a vbox container and i will drag and drop these nodes inside of it now i can make this vbox container as large as i want and for example here the alignment is set in begin but i could put this in the center and also in theme overrides constants I can change the separation. Let's say that I want to have um, 50 of separation. Well, there I have it. So it's much more expandable. Or you can even, even put everything in the beginning, make this a little bit smaller. And now using the anchors preset, you can position this B box container where you want. Okay, so it is much easier, much more expandable because I can add even more labels and it is still going to be um, following this separation or not using get access. So when creating a player movement, usually to calculate the direction of the player, what is usually done is subtracting the right input strength, okay? And then uh, this with the left input. Technically, this does work, okay? Because as you can see, well, this does run as it should, but well, this line, can be shortened a little bit and actually made clearer by basically using inputs.getaccess so if we hold down control and click over here we're going to go to the docs and here it is basically as you can see a shorthand for writing the, the same thing that we wrote just a second ago so as always if you are able to write the same thing but a little bit shorter and clearer it is something that you should be doing so from now on when creating a player movement and if you are calculating the direction of it uh, with this method make sure that you are using the get access function 5 not using visibility notifiers so for example let's say that i have here some pipes as if this was uh, a flappy bird game oh, well what you would usually have are some pipes moving to the left for example so the main thing with this is that even though it does work, if we go to the remote tab, that this is basically uh, where the nodes that are currently in the instance that we are playing exist. As you can see, the pipes are, are still existing, but well, in the game, we don't see them anymore. So the computer is processing or the mobile phone is processing some resources that it's basically in vain because we are not using them anymore. So basically, when these pipes are exiting the screen, we should make sure that they are deleted. And of course, you would still be able to just uh, add in the process a, a, a function that would basically check for the X position. And well, if it is something like minus 40, just delete it. But well, that may consume a little bit, a lot of resources. So the best way of actually doing this would be to use a visibility notifier node, okay? So you have both options for 2D and 3D and you have screen notifiers and screen enable enablers. So uh, the main difference is that screen notifiers 2D uh, have some signals that will tell you if the node has entered or exited the screen. And on the other hand, a uh, screen enabler will over here. Not only will it do that, but also it will uh, show or hide a, a node depending on uh, the situation okay so for this exact usage we just want to have the visible on screen notifier and this will create this other bounding box that you have to make the same size of your node okay maybe something like this and then over here on screen exited you will have to connect it and for example over here you have to do q3 so I will just do this with pipe, okay, with the first pipe, and then we will see what is going to be happening. So as soon as I start playing, everything seems to be going just fine. I will 
waits until all the pipes should be deleted but as you can see now in control i don't in remote sorry i don't see pipe one anymore because it has been deleted if i helped you solve some of mis the mistakes that you were committing in without subscribe to the channel for more similar content bye bye